Welcome to the Equipping You in Grace podcast, hosted by Dave Jenkins. The Equipping You in Grace podcast is a podcast about helping Christians develop a biblical worldview in a conversational tone about issues inside and outside the church. Now, for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. All right, guys. Well, welcome back to the Equipping You and Grace podcast. My name is Dave, and I'm the host for this podcast. And today we are going to talk about a very important uh, issue, and it is uh, this, keys to finding a good word-centered Christ-honoring church. There's few things that are more important than this, and it's uh, this is an issue that keeps coming up again and again in conversations with people. I get a lot of emails about this particular question, issue, and, and a lot of people wonder, okay, what do I look for in a good church? I think it's important uh, to say a few things uh, at the start. One, you really want to take a look, and we're going to, I got a whole bunch of questions that will help you here. But at the outset, the first thing that I want to say is, uh, do the does the church that you're looking at going to, uh, does it preach the whole counsel of God's word? Does it preach expository sermons? That that's the start. Expository sermons are sermons that go through books of the Bible, and the reason that's so important is because it reveals uh, practically what they believe about the Bible itself. The regular, steady diet of local churches is to be expository sermons. We uh, maybe need to do an episode on that, but the, the, the case for that is this, that the church has always preached such sermons. Uh, the Bible itself supports it, and so Here's, here's the thing about expository sermons and what they do. They, they expose you to the whole counsel of God's Word, from Genesis to Revelation and everywhere in between. And so you want to go to a church that preaches the whole Bible to you, uh, both from the Old Testament and the New Testament. So if the church isn't doing that at, at minimum, then you know, I, I won't go to that church. Like, that, that church is automatically off my list. The, the second thing that I'm looking for is, does the church gather together during the week? Whether that's a, you know, a midweek service, or is there some sort of, like, small group structure um, happening or, or, or something like that? That's really important because we we need to be meeting together. We need to have fellowship. We need to gather around the Word of God. This this shows a, a commitment by the church uh, to build relationships with one another. Very, very important. The third thing that I'm looking for is, does a church teach its people theology? Now, they don't necessarily have to have theology classes here, but... That's helpful too. Uh, there could be a commitment in the Sunday school structure to uh, teach people theology. So I'm, I'm looking for some of these things. The fourth thing, and it's also non negotiable, this is a non negotiable, like expository preaching. Uh, do they have a commitment to biblical eldership? Meaning, uh, do they have men only as pastors and elders? Uh, this is a non negotiable for, for me because I'm a complementarian. I believe that, that God created men and women equal in dignity and value and worth, but distinct in function and role. That means a man is to be a man, and a woman is to be a woman. Now, that doesn't mean that a woman has uh, nothing to do in the church. Titus 2 outlines what a woman is to do in the church. They're to teach older women or to teach younger uh, women, and older men are to teach younger men. That is a God-appointed role of, of older, of, of women for women and men for men, okay? That's a non-negotiable for me. I, I won't even, if some of these things aren't in place, you know, like, like when we moved uh, from Idaho to California, we, we were looking for a church that, that would do that. We took our time. We, we ended up 
interestingly enough, going to one church, uh, starting out, and we stayed there, and then we decided to look around, and we ended up back at that church for several years. And when we moved from California to Oregon, I, I looked all around, and really I found two churches. We went to the one that we thought was you know, the, the one that we would like the most, and, and we ended up staying. We've stayed at that church, and we are at that church, and that's important. They preach the, the church that we're at. They preach the ex, uh, expository sermons. Uh, they, they teach people theology. They have theology classes. They have small groups. They, they connect very well relationally. In fact, the, the first time I, I met uh, anybody from the church, they asked, you know, you're, you're new to the area. How can we help you? How can we serve you? And, and I mean, these people, I'd never met them. And, and here they were, uh, sent a, a gr- group of people. We moved into our house and they uh, helped us to move in. That, that was one of the very first encounters with this church. And it, I, I knew they had solid theology, but I wondered, how are they going to love, how do they love people? And um, that, that really impressed me. So you should look for a church that is not only, you know, solid theologically, but you also need to ask yourself, how are they going to care for me? How are they going to love me? How are they going to walk alongside of me? And there, there's a lot of other things, but these are some of the things that I, I, I am looking for in, in a church. And obviously they need to preach the gospel from the word of God. And they need to have solid theo- a solid theology of the gospel and um, for not just the preaching, but for the life of the church and for people in the church. So I'm looking for these kind of things, but they're not just, it's not just theological considerations that you need to look at. You need to look at how, how is the church uh, structured? How does it function? Um, how are the people, how do the people interact with one another? These kind of practical things speak a lot to where the theology really is in practice. And so there's a lot that I could say about that, but that's just some things that I'm thinking about as uh, I, I'm looking at a church, as I'm evaluating a church. Now, here's some here's some other things. I could I could talk about that for a long time, but here's some other things that uh, I, I send to people that email me. They ask me, how do I find a good Bible-based church? Well, many people struggle to find a Bible-based church. As you look for one, please consider asking yourself these questions in light of the church's statement of faith. Now, some churches, they don't have their statement of faith posted on their website. You need to ask them politely if they will send you a statement of faith. What do they believe? Uh, If the answer is no to that, then you should not go to that church. If the answer is yes... Um, then they and they affirm what we're going to talk about here. It's a safe place to begin to go and then to begin to sit under the preaching and teaching in that church and learn more about the church before committing as a member. Now, I am always slow to, I, I, I'll, I generally have this like unspoken rule about six months to a year before I'll even consider joining a church because I, 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 I am intentionally slow about that. Now, here are some things that the church has to affirm um, and practice uh, for me to stay there and, and really for you to stay there at, at that church. So here's, here's those things. Does a church affirm that the Bible consists of the Old and the New Testament and that it is, uh, that it is reliable and that it's trustworthy that it, and that it's without error and without the possibility of error? that it's clear, and that it's for every phase and every part of your life, and that it's binding on your life. Uh, Does the church affirm the doctrine of the Trinity? Does the church affirm the deity of Christ, that Jesus presently has two natures, divine and human? Does the church affirm that Jesus is a man right now, that he was resurrected in a glorified body? Does the church affirm the personhood of the Holy Spirit? Does the church affirm that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, without any works or baptism necessary to uh, obtain or even maintain salvation? And does the church affirm that Adam and Eve were the first people who ever existed and they were created by God? Well, if, if your answer to any of these questions is yes about any church that we're about to consider, then you should avoid 
that church and that's these. Do they support women pastors and elders? Do they support homosexuality as an alternative lifestyle to biblical marriage between one man and one woman? Do they affirm that a, a practicing unrepentant homosexual can be a true Christian? Is water baptism necessary for salvation? Do they teach universalism that all people will be saved apart from personal saving faith in Christ? Do they support the ministries of Bill Johnson, Joyce Meyer, Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland, uh, Kenneth Hagen, and so on and so forth? Do they affirm the prosperity gospel or not? Do they have unbelievers on the pastoral staff or the worship team? Can the believer lose their salvation? Is evolution what God uses uh, to bring us into the world? Now, here's some other questions worth asking. Uh, what style of worship does the church have? How, how often do they take communion? Does a church allow children in the sanctuary during the service? H has there been a, a church split? If so, uh, why? In fact, another good question is to find out the history of the church. Do they hold to the King James Version only? Now, picking a church is, uh, you know, it, it, it is a very personal issue. Now, different Christians, they have different criteria. Um, you know, perhaps you like a certain way that a that a pastor will preach from the word, but we need to we need to ask ourselves, is the pastor preaching the point of the text as a point of the sermon and then responsibly pointing you to Christ from that text? Is the worship music, you know, okay? Or, or, you know, do you have a certain style that you like? Like, for example, you know, I would probably prefer and, and lean towards more of like a rock type style of, of worship. Uh, but, but that doesn't mean like that's the only style that, that I like uh, for worship music. Um, that's a preference. But the question that we really need to ask is, does the church sing uh, solid worship songs? That That's a very important consideration. It's not only that the church is to preach sound expository sermons that, you know, honor the text and point people responsibly to Christ from that text, but also uh, in response to that sermon is the church singing songs that are that are grounded in the word of god so that because worship is our response to the preached word of god you know as we we take in the sermon our response to that sermon is is our worship you know uh you know both to prepare our hearts for the preached word and then to respond to the the preached word of god and so we need to be sure that we're singing uh sound uh, songs in in our worship, so we need to ask, like, what is, what are your views on certain types of you know worship music out there? Do you, does a church sing Bethel and Vineyard and Hillsong? Well, that that church should you might want to find a different church. Uh, you know, do they support musicians that support homosexuality and and other type things? Uh, what what are where where are they at? Or do they? truly sing like hymns and solid songs or maybe even this the the psalms or or something like that you know like these are important things to understand like and then and then like i was talking about about biblical eldership you know like if the church is do the elders are the elders the ones that that make the decisions or or do they also uh you know allow the congregation to participate in the decision-making of the church. Now, for some people, they don't mind the elders, uh, you know, making the decisions and then uh, informing the con congregation and, and, and in certain things like whether they're going to get a new building or something like that, you know, get the input of the church and so on and so forth. Now, for some people, they want to have more say. They, they want the elders to meet and to gather and then to inform the congregation on what's happening, and these are these are preferences that affect how the church is, you know, going to function and how it forms. But it's still perfectly fine either way. You know, these things that that we're talking about here today, the 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 they relate a lot to uh, what a healthy church is. A, a healthy church is is one that centers its life and its ministry 
on the word of God and in pointing people to the finished and sufficient work of Christ. And not just for our salvation, but also for our discipleship, for our sanctification. Uh, because the gospel is not just, uh, you know, for our, our conversion, for our salvation. It's also for the whole of our lives. Uh, it's for our preaching. It's for our teaching. It's for our evangelism. It's for our discipleship. It's, it's for everything. It's for our vocation. And so we need to be clear about that. Like the gospel is for all of life. It's for every aspect of our lives. And so we need to, we need to really like dive in. And that's why I, I, I tell people to be slow in becoming a member of a church. Like, like even if it's solid, like just take your time, slow down, figure it out, you know, get to know some people, build relationships, get to know your, the pastor and, and the, the elder elders and, and those uh, key leaders in the church, like you dig in and, and see, uh, are they really solid? You know, and as you're doing that, get in the Bible yourself. Like, this is why, you know, some people are very um, nervous, especially if they've come out of a church that that isn't biblical. Like, they, they're so nervous about, okay, and, and I can understand that. Like, uh, as a church, as a church, is this a good church? Well, these are some things to help you to think through. Like, the, the, the issue is, do they preach the Bible? Do they preach straight through the Bible? Good. Great. Do they, uh, you know, preach the gospel from every in every sermon and in every text? Do they do they point people to Christ and away from themselves? Uh, do they talk honestly and authentically about the struggles of of life with with people in the church? Like, can they can you go to the pastor and 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 receive prayer and biblical counsel? And uh, there's there's a lot of things to consider about you know joining a church, continuing to go to a church. But, but the main thing is, is do they preach the Bible? Now, you know, we were at a church in Southern California, and we, I disagreed with the pastor on the, the rapture, but he made a joke about it. Like, he, he said, he preached a sermon on, on this, and he even said, hey, uh, if you agree, whether you agree with me or not, guess what? You know, uh, uh, if, if we do have the rapture, uh, great. On the way up, you're going to tell me that, you know, I was right. And, you know, if we don't get rapture, guess what? I'll, I'll tell you that you were you were right, you know. And this kind of charitable attitude on, you know, the timing of, of when Jesus will return, on um, those kind of things, um, you know, on non-essential matters is so vital because what it does is it maintains the unity of the church um, and, and it really keeps us focused on what is absolutely essential and what is absolutely not essential. Like for me, what's not uh, for what what's essential in a uh, joining or even going to a church is they have to preach the whole Bible. Uh, they have to preach expository sermons. There has to be no woman pastors or elders or even any hint or sniff that they will go in that direction. And, and that they have a firm and solid commitment to, you know, building relationships around the word with people like small in small groups or in classes and teaching people theology and, and those kind of things. Like, because we live in an age, and we've talked about it on this podcast, where we are, we are so, people are biblically illiterate and they need help. And, and the church exists. One of the reasons the church exists is, yes, to reach the lost and uh, to see the lost saved, but also to make disciples who make disciples. And so what I really want to see is, is how is the church doing it that? Like, they, we talk a lot about discipleship, but how are they practically doing? And so I just want to be really slow and intentional. I want to see how they're doing in that and uh, how they're loving and caring for the people. Uh, because what this does is it reveals their convictions about the Bible it reveals our convictions about the church itself. Like, what is it? What does the church really mean, and what is its purpose? Uh, and, and you know, so just pay attention to not only like the things that you're being taught, but also how are things being run? How are they being governed? Are they being being governed according to scripture, or you know, just whatever they think? You know, they're just making it up on the fly. Like, you know, if they have biblical elders. 
they should be meeting. They should be talking. Like you should be getting to know your uh, pastors and elders, those who are leading the church. You know, are are they solid? Like relationally, do they demonstrate care and concern? For example, uh, this past Lord's Day, uh, well, two Sundays ago now, I preached, and my pastor, the senior pastor, asked me on uh, this past Sunday. He asked me, "How did it go?" Like, and that meant so much to me. Um, I, and I said, oh, they want to have me back. And I I just felt really cared about. And even some of the other elders asked me, you know, because I, I told them, I said, I'm going to be gone. And, you know, communicating like those types of things about what's happening in your life and maybe some opportunities that you have. And, you know, would you pray for me on that? And, you know, these kind of things are, are really vital. Uh, we should be in churches where not only is the word being preached, but it's it's being modeled, it's being lived out and true care and concern are being expressed um, in community with God's people um, as we gather around the Word. And as the Spirit works, the Spirit works through the Word. He works through the means of grace. And that is uh, so, so vital. So there's a lot that, that could be said here. And, I, and, I've, been, and I've said quite a bit. But, but if you have any takeaways from this episode... The, the biggest thing is make sure that the church is grounded in the Word, that they preach the Word, that they teach the Word, and that they practice and model the Word, and that the gospel is preached from every sermon, from every uh, every uh, men's event, or, or if you're a guy, for a guy, you know, men, men, every men's event, the gospel is preached. Every If you're a woman, if the... Uh, going to a women's event, guess what? That the gos- the word and the gospel are preached at every women's event. And, you know, understand that, yeah, you might have some preferences. Like, you know, we talked about how often do they take communion. You, you may like communion every week, and that's okay. But if the church has communion once a week or once a month or, or once a quarter, don't don't not go to that church if they preach the word, uh, you know, and, and those types of things. Uh, don't make your determination... On, on a preference matter, like the timing of, of the Lord's return, like your conviction on, uh, you know, the rapture or, you know, uh, those types of things. Don't don't make that your determination. Those are secondary matters. Those are preferences. Um, make your determination on what they believe and what they teach on essential matters like the Trinity, about the Bible itself, about the person and the work of, of Jesus, about sin about men and women, uh, the differences the, the differences between uh, the, the sexes and their function and role. Uh, make your determination on those types of things and, and on the, the, the music. Do they sing solid music? That is uh, absolutely becoming an essential issue to consider today uh, because of where worship music is headed today. But I, I hope there's a lot more that, that I could say in, in this episode, I've said already quite a lot, and um, I probably will do, we'll probably talk about this more down the road, but I, I, I've i been um, getting asked about this quite a lot lately, about what, what are some keys to finding a, a good, word-centered, Christ-honoring church? I, I want you guys to find those types of churches, you know, as we've moved over the last... Uh, four years, you know, from Idaho to California and then California to Oregon. These are these are some things that I've used, that my wife and I have used, to f- consistently find good churches uh, that, you know, preach the essentials of the faith, but we might disagree on some secondary or third order issues. And we still are going to that church because you know, these people, they, they love the Word, and the pastor preaches the Word, and they love the people, and, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're being edified and growing in God's grace with, with others, uh, like-minded believers. And, you know, the big thing, the last thing I'll say is, especially because we're Reformed, we think, if I don't find a Reformed church, then I don't have to go there. Don't be like that. Like, if they preach the whole Word of God, Yes, should you find a Reformed church? That would be the best. That would be the ideal. But realize that you might not be able to find a Reformed church in your area. And so you're going to have to be, you're going to have to understand, do they preach expository sermons? Do they preach, you know, in such a way as they, you know, do they call sinners to repent and to believe and to trust 
in Christ, not, not because of themselves, but, be, but because Christ alone truly does save by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and irresistibly draws sinners uh, through the Holy Spirit to conversion, or do they preach that, oh, all you have to do is just come? Like, there's a difference, like, calling people to repent and believe and trust in Christ and, and to trust and uh, somehow be uh, coerced to come. There's, there's, a, there's a big difference there. So some of these things you're going to have to work out, and you're going to have to think about which ones are absolutely essential and which ones aren't. So, you know, there's, uh, we, we will be talking about that in the coming days, about what we call theological triage, the difference between what, what is first order, that is, of the gospel, and what is secondary and third. And, and so some of these things, third order theology, so some of these things that we've talked about today are, are even setting the stage for some of these things, for how you should be thinking about this so that you can be a Berean yourself. Like, you should be thinking about these things so that you can, you know, find a good, solid church so that you can be like a Berean, searching the Word to see if these things are so. You should always be having an open Bible and and considering what is the pastor saying, what is the Bible teacher saying, and and they should be teaching you only the Scripture. So, uh, like I said, there's a lot more that could be said, and since we do try to keep these episodes to 30 minutes, um, I do want to say thank you for listening or watching this episode, and I hope that this has been helpful to you as as we consider what does it mean to be a Berean and, and and I want to say I want you to be a Berean. I want you to get in your Bible. I want you to study it personally, but I also want you to study it corporately with the church. And so I hope that this is helpful and that it will encourage you to go and to search and to look for a Christ honoring word centered and word preaching church that honors God and that you can be built up and equipped in and serve in for God's glory alone. So I want to thank you for listening or watching this episode of the Equip You and Grace podcast. Until next uh, Monday and Wednesday, may God bless you and keep you. Thank you for listening to the Equipping You and Grace podcast. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, rate us on the app, and share this with your friends and family on social media. If you want to find us on social media, you can find us on Twitter, at Servants of Grace, on Instagram, at Servants of Grace, or by searching at Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find this episode and many others like it on the front page of our website, servantsofgrace.org.